When you pick the wrong subject, you have an uphill battle. While I do believe no subject is inherently bad, not all subjects are suitable for you. We all have different strengths and weakness when it comes to painting. So today, let's talk about a few tips about choosing your subject. Hi, this is Eric from Cafe Watercolor. Choosing the right subject to paint can be quite tricky. There were quite a few times when I saw something could be a great subject to paint and end up looking terrible in my painting. And on the other hand, there were things that I saw looks really boring in real life end up looking great in the painting. While there's still some mystery when it comes to painting the right subject for you, there are a few things to consider. Number one, don't look for the obvious. This is one of the biggest mistakes people make, and I make that mistake sometime myself. Something that looks stunning in real life might not be a good subject for painting. Things like amazing cloudscape in the sunset, vast mountain range, or a field of flowers. These are beautiful sights to behold in person, but as a painting, it doesn't work as well. Part of the reason is that it is very difficult to reproduce that in-person experience with a painting. Also, those are the obvious beauty that people tend to look at and celebrate, so it is very hard to do them justice in painting. Rather, look for something that people tend to ignore but tell some more intimate story. It could be a house around your neighborhood, one of the local coffee shops, a quiet street, or a barn somewhere. They can all potentially be great subjects to paint. So don't look for the obvious beauty and don't ignore the everyday extraordinary. Now, that doesn't mean there's no artist who does those magnificent scenery well. In fact, there are quite a few artists who do those very, very well, and I have great respect for them. But for me personally, I don't have the confidence to do those type of subjects myself, and I personally feel they are less personal and relatable. Number two, look for a strong shape. Readability is very important for a good painting, and having strong shape in your painting is the key to that. It can be a positive or a negative shape. And I'm not talking about a specific object like a building or tree. I'm talking about a big shape. This is what I mean when I say connect the shape when I'm painting. We are trying to paint a big major shape rather than individual small shapes. Maybe you did find a shape in a specific area in your scene that is very appealing. If that's the case, crop the image. There's no hard set rule saying you need to paint everything in the scene. Number three, envision. Can you do it? In other words, can you envision yourself painting this particular picture? If the answer is no, then maybe that means you're not there just yet. And that's completely fine. I have many reference photos that I saw can potentially be a good painting subject, but I just cannot see it. Maybe one day as I progress as an artist, I will be able to interpret that into a painting. But if you find a scene that you can at least somewhat envision a painting out of it, that means you have a higher chance of success then you should start planning your approach and go for it. Let's look at a recent example. About two weeks ago, I went to Lake Washington in Kirkland with my family. I have been there many, many times. It is a beautiful lake, and every time I go there, I feel great. So there I was, looking for a subject to paint next to the lake. The first trap is to paint the lake itself, because that's what everyone is there for. So we all have the perception that the lake is the main character here. But as I turn around, I see this view and I immediately realize that I found the subject. It has a strong shape and I can imagine it being a painting. This small building set up as a perfect focal point for the painting. What is that building you ask? It is a public restroom. Now, it might sound very weird to paint a public restroom. Everyone is there to see the lake. That is the obvious beauty. Nobody is there to see the public restroom. But when it comes to painting, this building and a tree makes a good major shape. And I still have the lake in the painting to tell the story, but it's no longer the focus of the painting. So I indeed turn it into a painting. Now let's look at the process of this painting. Before we start, if you find this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe. Ring the bell icon so you won't miss out my next video. Okay, let's paint. Okay, so let's talk about this painting. So I do the drawing first, 
just some fast loose long line blocking out a big shape just trying to get the placement and the scale of things down now i did do a value study of this painting so it was really really helpful so to me a successful painting is not just the process of painting the specific painting itself but also the moment you pick the subject you compose your shot with your phone or your camera in general and then any preliminary study such as a sketch or a value study that i did all of these contribute to a successful painting. So every step is important. Don't skimp on any of those. Now I am starting to do a little bit tighter drawing. I was debating if I should put in the background building because I thought it might get a little bit distracting, but I thought the building looks kind of cool hidden behind the trees. So that will be a little bit more interesting if I add it in. As long as I am able to keep them pushed back into the background, it should be fine. There are quite a few little figures in this one because I do want to convey that people are coming out enjoying in the sun next to the lake. The funny thing is because of the pandemic, most people are still doing social distance. So the figures kind of feels they are very evenly spaced. That didn't really bug me much, but I do move a few figures here and there, just trying to make the composition work a little bit better. So you might see this guy that's wearing white. He is really off to the right in the photo, but I move him in a little bit just for a little bit better composition. If I keep him to the far right, like in the photo, he might be competing with the main focus, which is the building. So I'm pre-mixing some of the color and going to start my first wash. Now, if we look at the value study, the first wash that I'm going to do is actually the white of the paper in the value study. So places like the sky, some of the figures and the light side of the building. So the color of the light, that's what this wash is always about. So this time I actually use a little bit of masking fluid because there's a lot of little tiny figures and very thin poles. So I thought I use a little bit of masking fluid so I can have a little bit easier time when I'm painting some big washes. I don't need to paint around little things too much. So here I am starting to paint in the color of the light. So the red shirt of the lady in the front and the building's light. And then I start to paint in the sky. I want to have a little bit of cloud, but not too much. Also the light part of the tree. So keep them most very light and transparent. I did pre-wet my paper a little bit with a sponge. So some of the color might start to have a little bit of bloom. If the color is starting to blend into each other, that's actually a good thing. That's what watercolor is all about, doing wet on wet, letting them flow and blend into each other. We can separate them later with different values, but the first wash is really just about the color of the light. So while you can try to separate things with different colors, but if they blend with each other, that's what watercolor is about. Try to embrace that. It is far more important to have a nice consistent wash rather than trying to get around all the details and trying to separate things. While I do try to preserve some highlight and colors, I do that very loosely. Now I start to paint in the color of the skin. They are mostly very light because they're under the sun. And again, if the color bleed out, let it be. As long as the wash looks clean and consistent, it's fine. Now onto the second wash. The first wash is mostly dry. Now it's time we start to paint the middle value. So we paint over the tree and because the wash is mostly dry most of the edges is going to be hard edges so this is a good time that we start to do some initial separations between values and form that being said i still don't mind when the same value kind of blending into each other the mixture right now however needs to be a little bit drier 
you don't want to use the same consistency as the first wash otherwise it's going to look too transparent and when the color blend into each other with that consistency it's going to blend further so because my mixture is a little bit drier even if i do a little bit of wet on wet it's not going to blend too far you can still see a little bit of separation so i am painting the background building try to state those very loosely just paint in the shadow shape and a little hints of the window and i quickly come back to the tree area the tree is a huge part of this painting so i pre-mix quite a bit of the greens different tones and shades of greens because i have a large area to cover and now that the tree is mostly done i connect that shape into the stairs and the shadow side of the building the cast shadow of the building so this is also the time i need to be a little bit more careful and paint around the figures that's standing in front of the building i keep that figure there because it is a very important element to bring out the contrast of the light and dark there but already you start to see the light since I paint in the middle tone. Again, if you look at the value study, I am painting one single shape. Even though I start to paint some darker value already because I want to have that wet onto wet effect. But don't lose the sight of the big general shape that we initially spotted and designed. The value study is helpful, but sometimes when you start to look at your photo for color reference, you start to suck into the photo again and forget about your initial vision, which is your value study. So keep your eye on the value study and you're looking at the photo just for a little bit of reference for the color and maybe a little bit detail, but fix your eyes on your value study. That's your vision. That's what you come up with. So if you do like your value study, you do like how it turns out, then stick to that. Because if you stick to that, you will most likely have a successful painting. So my big shape is almost done. Now I want to do the reflection right away because I want a little bit of the soft edge in that. So it's very important that I do this wet onto wet. But really make sure your mixture is thick enough because the wash is at the damp stage. If your mixture is too wet, it's going to start to have cauliflower edges. It's very important that you understand your mixture. So the big rule of thumb is the mixture on your brush should be drier than the paper. It's not the first time I paint Lake Washington actually in this spot. But this is the first time I actually turn around and notice how nice this specific view is. Because before I wasn't as experienced as now. So when I was at the lake, I always just looking at the lake and I always stuck in the mindset that the lake should be the main character. So whenever I go to the lake, I always look at the lake and see if I can find good subject at the lake, maybe some boat and stuff. But now that I start to look around and I find this is a great view. This is a great spot. That's why I painted like these now. I think it is very important that we think outside of the box, outside of the frame, and really look at the hidden beauty that everyone tend to ignore. Because again, nobody is there to see the public restroom. But as an artist, we are sort of responsible to dig out what people tend to ignore but also very beautiful very significant so here i'm doing my third wash now i'm painting the dark so this is the part that everything start to come together we start to have the full range of value from light to middle value to dark now it's very simple three value painting the complicated part is actually how do you simplify that because once you simplify that it's actually very easy to do and it's very easy for the viewers to get 
the hard part for me is always trying to figure out what shape to merge, what value to merge together, how to simplify what we see. So now I'm giving the building a darker value because it is quite dark. So I'm darkening the roof as well, only two side. The third side is a little bit lighter. And now the big picture is mostly in, I'm going to start to paint the figure. The figures actually took me quite a bit of time because there are quite a few of them. And even though I don't need to paint super detail, but I need to be careful with the shape that I paint. Sometimes these little delicate shapes are important. I need to paint out the shadow, the dark side of each figure, connect them to the cast shadow, as well as still preserve the light on the figure. Try to be careful with each and every stroke that you paint, especially for a small shape like these, because you want to stay loose, but at the same time, you don't want to make it messy. So I always say, think twice and do it once. So like I mentioned before, doing a loose painting is not painting fast per se, it's to think about what you do and try to make every brushstroke count. Now I scrape off those masking fluid and I start to fill in those white with some colors as needed. So that did make my life a little bit easier. I don't use masking fluid too much because for the most part, some smaller shapes I can paint over. But because this one has quite a few of them and I want to make the bigger wash a little bit easier and consistent. So a little bit of masking fluid might help. So I'm painting the figures. They actually took quite a bit of time. But some nice little figures like these, they really assinuate the scenery quite a bit. It gives you the sense of scale, it tells more story, and it just feels more relatable because it feels like you're there with all these people. But as far as the big picture goes, the big shape is already there. If I stop at this point, it might look a little bit unfinished because of the white spot and the figure on paint, but the big picture wise, it is done. So that goes back to our initial point of the subject. The shape needs to be good. You need to have a nice, strong, big shape. Because if you don't have that strong big shape, no matter how many details you paint, it's not going to look as good as you want it to. So details and these little figures won't make the painting. They're just icing on the cake. Now, if you can paint those well, then it really brings your painting to another level. But again, the effectiveness, the readability of your whole painting still depends on your ability to figure and compose out a big shape that is very recognizable. So now I'm just giving a little bit more form on the beach, on the stairs, and just adding a little bit more transition tones. Try to wrap up the painting adding a little bit darker tones in the reflection, define some of the stuff a little bit more. So I'm looking at some awkward white spot that I didn't paint. And if I found those, maybe I'll fill those in with some shadows or just some shapes. Do some cleanup, come back in with some white gouache. So under the building there, you know, and separate the background building with the sky just a little bit. And now I start to paint the shadow in the foreground. That's going to help us to frame the scenery a little bit more. Also give us more sense of lighting in the foreground as well. And here is the finished painting. I hope you like this painting and you enjoy this video. I do really enjoy painting this one, it does really give out a nice sunny vibe next to the lake. 
The importance of picking the right subject for you cannot be understated. You really want to pick a subject that you can tackle. If you start painting it just because you find it pretty, you might end up with a painting you are not happy with. Or worse, you will start comparing your painting to the subject and feel utterly defeated. So don't do that to yourself. Choose your subject wisely and enjoy painting it. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. You can also go to my website at cafewatercolor.com, sign up for my newsletter, and download my free watercolor PDF guide. I am Eric from Cafe Watercolor. See you next time.